on that first section on your study guide. Solve those any way you want. If I solve it differently than you, that doesn't mean that my way is better. It just means I chose different. Okay, but all, all things are fair game on this. On the first one, number one there, I got x squared plus 16x plus 60. That'll factor. So I, I did it by factoring. The factors of 60 that I add to 16 are 10 and 6. So I just said x plus 10 times x plus 6. Set both of those equal to 0. Got me a negative 10. And a negative 6. Do we have to show that step? Can we nope. just change the sign? We can just change the sign. So make sure you got both of the answers on that one. Number two, remember how I did it? I think it's set up for completing the square. See, I did factoring also. So, but it is 4 divided by 2 is 2, 2 squared is 4. So, you could do completing the square simple. You could do factoring simple. A quadratic formula would work on number two also. But I did do factoring. I had to move that 49 over. So when I subtracted 49 from both sides, that got me minus 45, because 4 minus 49 is negative 45. So now A times C is negative 45. The factors of negative 45 that add to 4 are 9 and negative 5. So I had X plus 9 times X minus 5 gets me negative 9. And... Five. Six is negative nine and five. Yeah. Looks like on three I did the quadratic formula. So everybody all right, we're ready to move. Negative 4x squared plus 6x minus 2 equals 0. You could divide that all, since they're all evens, you could divide it all by 2 or negative 2 to get smaller numbers. Okay, I got some people in some of my classes that like to do that. You could do it on that, but 4 and 6, that's not too big. So I just kept it as it was and worked it that way. My A is negative 4, my B is 6, and my C is negative 2. So I had x equals negative 6 plus or minus the square root of b squared is 36 minus 4 times negative 4 times negative 2 all over 2 times negative 4. All right, that's negative times negative is positive 16. 16 times negative 2 is negative 32. So 36 minus 32 is 4. So you're looking at negative 6 plus or minus the square root of 4 over negative 8. The well, square root of 4 is 2. So you got to do negative 6 plus 2 divided by negative 8 and negative 6 minus 2 divided by negative 8. I still have people get there and not know that they've got to keep going and get two numbers on that. Okay, square root of 4 is 2, so you're going to get two numbers. Negative 6 plus 2 is negative 4. Negative 4 divided by negative 8 is a positive half. Um. Negative 6 minus 2 is negative 8. Negative 8 divided by negative 8 is a positive 1. Factor, you get it by grouping. Did you do grouping? Since that is not a one. Oh, that's why I didn't do it. I didn't know. So you just do like four x and the plus four equals. What What were your factors of eight that added to six? Four two. So you had negative four x squared plus four x plus two x minus two. You had to plug those in there and then do the two by two thing. Okay, so what you did, Mason? I didn't know you would do that. Oh, we did that in class, or how do you think Mason just knew how to do it? Mm -hmm. It's okay. All right, number four. Uh, I did on number four, I did quadratic formula again. So I'm just going to keep rolling with what I did when I worked it out. At 3x squared, I had to move that negative 35 over. 3x squared plus 22x plus 35 equals 0. So my A is 3, my 
B is 22, plus C is 35. That's some bigger numbers this time. X equals negative B plus or minus the square root. 22 squared is 484, according to my scratch from yesterday. Minus 4 times 3 times 35. It's about 5. All over 2 times A. All right. Let's see here. Where does that one go to? Looks like I'm going to get 64 underneath the radical. Am I seeing that from yesterday? Scatula says yes, 64 yeah, underneath there. When you said under, I was thinking, I was like, no, if you count 36. Under the radical. Yeah, I guess. So then the square root of 64 is 8. So I've got to do negative 22 plus 8 and divide it by 6. And negative 22 minus 8 and divide it by 6. Negative 22 plus 8 means negative 16. Is that right? Negative 16 divided by 6. Take a 2 out. Be negative 8 thirds. Nope. What's negative 22 plus 8? 14. That's why I was wrong. It's negative 14. So negative 14 over 6. Take a 2 out. is negative 7 thirds. Negative 22 minus 8 is negative 30. Negative 30 divided by 6 is negative 5. Is that the same as that to 1.2? Yes. Yes. I just mess up on that because I forget being at the end of the grouping. Factoring is my favorite, but I don't do it when I have to group. I didn't know you had it. I forgot it. Well, it's a good thing that was just the practice test. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Five and six, I saw a lot of people doing the quadratic formula on those, and you could. That's fine if you did. Your B would be zero on both of those, but there's an easier thing to do when you don't have a B. We did this just by taking what was called the first method we looked at, solving by taking square roots. When you don't have a B, you can just solve it algebraically. So I would just subtract four from both sides. 49x squared equals negative four. Divide by 49. So I did that, but I got like a weird number. Yeah, it is. It's a fraction. Yeah. That gets me x squared equals negative 4 over 49. Now i got to undo that squared, so i got a square root. So x is the positive or negative square root of 4 over negative 4 over 49. Remember when you square root, you square root the top and the bottom. Okay, since it's got a negative underneath there, it's going to be an i. So x is positive or negative, going to have an i in it. Square root of 4 is 2. Square root of 49. Seven. Uh, I got. You did quadratic formula. Are you supposed uh, to do that? Yeah, I got. I got twenty-eight. I divided by ninety-eight. You didn't reduce. What does twenty-eight over ninety-eight reduce to? Uh, Make it down over two and not reduce. Did you get it yet? There you go. Can you put two i divided by seven? It's the same thing. Yeah. All right, I'm going to do number six, the same method. I got six x squared. Minus 54 equals 0, so I don't have a B. That's my cue that I can just solve it algebraically. 54 is being subtracted, so I'm adding it to both sides. This one works out a lot easier. No I's or anything. 6x squared is positive 54 divided by 6. I like that because 54 divided by 6 is 9, which is a perfect square. So when I undo that squared, positive or negative square root of 9 is positive or negative 3. Yep. yep. So you do factor or quadratic formula. Yep. Wait, right. How would you factor on that? Could you put it equal zero? You could take out a GCF in the beginning. So I look here and they both have a six in common. So that would leave me with x squared minus nine equals zero. 
and then x squared minus 9 is the same as x plus 3 times x minus 3. Remember difference of squares from algebra 1? That's what that is. It hadn't been that long ago for you. I know, but I don't remember that. Wow. Algebra is so different than like than this. Because we just did notes work to get notes work cheating this and just do one to note to this. I don't know. <laughs> I mean it's different. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Alright, seven, eight, nine, and ten. Uh we'll put those all on one page up here. There was uh, no math needed on those. You could have done some math, but there wasn't any needed. There's number seven. There's number eight. There's number nine. And number ten. All right. It says use the graph to determine number and type of solutions. And we've said it a gazillion times about the number of solutions. Solutions or roots or zeros are where these things cross the x-axis. So if I look here on number 7, does this thing ever cross the x-axis? Yes, it crosses it twice. You've got two real solutions. Okay, if you see it cross, it's a real solution. How many times did it cross? Two. Okay, so you got to write two real on that. Here on number 8, it only hits it one time. So it has one real solution. Okay, most of you were okay on that, but then here on number 9 is where the confusion came in. Does this thing on number 9 ever cross the x-axis? No, so that means it's solutions. You would still get some solutions. What would they have in them on your answer? Imaginary. Imaginary would be I. So we call that, you can write to imaginary if you want to, but to write it in the same way that those are written, imaginaries are non-real. When it's non-real, there's always two of them. Because remember, you got plus minus. So, so that's two solutions? Two non-real solutions. And then 10, you can see pretty simple. It hits it one, two times, and then you can see them, so they're real. So how is that? What would we consider the solutions for this? Yeah. What number nine is it two? You would have to solve it, do the quadratic formula, and get your plus or minus whatever i it is. It would have two imaginary solutions. It would come out with i's in the answer. All right, I liked number 11. It was a pretty fun problem. It says uh, the Freedom Tower in New York City is 1776 feet tall. That's kind of cool that it's 1776 and then that the year we did something big, like became a country or something like that. It was yeah. So that's, that would be 1492, Columbus of the Ocean. I got, I got the head of Boyd Mason. 1776, I think that's when we became a it was really on the Constitution, I think. Yeah. But yeah, and that was what made us, so that's all right. That made us good. So I wonder if that's really a coincidence or if they I made think it they did that. Yeah. Alright, so it says A, after how many seconds will the object hit the ground? Well, what you have to realize is that when something hits the ground, how high is it? It's at zero. So all you've got to do is take that equation they gave you and set it equal to zero. And you're just solving now. So you've got options. You can do quadratic formula. I did this like I did number 5 and 6. It doesn't have a B. So I subtracted 1776 from both sides. Got me negative 16t squared equals negative 1776 divided by negative 16. That's fine. That got me 111. Now this time, it tells me on there that I'm going to round to the nearest hundredth. So I actually get to get a decimal on this. So I'm going to do the square root of 111, and then I don't care about the negative one here. Because you're solving for time. Time is not negative seconds. Uh, it said to round to the nearest hundred. And when I did that, that ended up getting me 10.54 seconds. Part B. B 
says what's the height of the object three seconds after it's been dropped. So I got to do on that is plug a three in for your T. So negative 16 times three seconds squared plus 1776. So that was nine times negative 16. I didn't even write it, that part of it down. I just worked the whole thing out. Ended up getting me a 1632 feet. Did I get that? Good, 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 good. All right, number 12. Easy one on number 12. I got negative 2 minus 5i minus negative 4 plus 2i. Okay, what's key on this is the subtraction sign. So all we're doing is subtracting like terms. My real numbers, negative 2 minus negative 4. If I do negative 2 minus negative 4, that gets me 2. Then on my imaginary part, negative 5i minus 2i. Negative 5i minus 2i is negative 7i. Standard form is a plus bi. So I'm already in real and imaginary. So circle that. That's your answer. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, first, I'm going to try to pull it. It's got a subtraction sign. Huh? That wouldn't be wrong, but... All right, on number 13, there's not a sign in between the parentheses, which means multiply. So I got 3 minus 3i three times 1 minus 6i. So it's two binomials, so I'm foiling here first. Outer. Inner. Last, that negative times a negative is a positive. I times i is i squared. Now, when I saw some people, I'm going to go ahead and combine these here first. In my middle, I got like terms negative 18 minus 3, 19, 20, 21, 3 minus 21. What I saw some people forgetting is they forgot what I've got to put in for I squared. I squared is the same as negative 1. So 18 times negative 1 is like that. Now, you can do one more thing. You've got like terms there, don't you? 3 minus 18 is negative 15. Okay. So you have an I squared, you just change the sign of what it did? Yes, I squared. If it had been a negative, that would have made it a positive. Yes. Oh, wait. How, oh, no. Oh, so you take off the I whenever you change it to negative one then? Mm -hmm. Now for the fun part. You shouldn't have a squared in your answer. You don't have an I squared, but you'll have a, I, a normal I, yes. And you can remember that because standard form was A plus BI. There wasn't an I squared in it. All right, back page number 14, solve the system. So we got Y equals negative 2X squared minus 6, and then we got Y equals negative X minus 3 squared plus 8. Okay. We looked at doing this by graphing, by substitution, or elimination. This one I'm actually going to do by substitution because they both say y equals, so I can just set them equal to each other. And a lot of people had that thought and said that to me, but then they screwed up with that x minus 3 squared. Yeah. x minus 3 squared is not x squared minus 9. x minus 3 squared means you've got to write that whole quantity twice. So that gets you x squared. Here's a minus 3x and a minus 3x, so that's minus 6x, and then a plus 9. Okay, now after that, look what's out in front of that whole thing. So now i got to make all that stuff the opposite sign. Distribute a negative to it. Okay, then the last piece of that's got a plus 8. So if you add that 8 to that negative 9, you end up with y equals negative x squared plus 6x minus 1. So now, I'm going to set those two equal to each other. So 
I've got negative 2x squared minus 6 equals negative x squared plus 6 minus 6x minus 1. Yeah. Well, what we're looking to do here is to get it to a quadratic. So we need it to be in standard form. So I need to start moving stuff one way or another. Since this one had less stuff on it, I chose to move it. So I'm going to add 2x squared to itself and to its buddy. And I'm going to add 6 because it's being subtracted to itself and its buddy. So that gets me x squared plus 6x plus 5 is equal to 0. Okay, that's how if you added x squared to negative two x, you can get negative x mm -hmm. squared. Mm -hmm. But your other signs are also going to all be different, so it would end up you would have the same thing. Negative x squared minus six x minus five is the same thing. Oh. Mm -hmm. oh okay. Because you can oh, multiply the multiply and divide by negative one and one all you want to. Oh. Okay. okay what if I don't want from that side to this side? So well, you wouldn't subtract x squared. Okay. That would if I added x squared, that would give me a negative one. Right? Yeah. Okay. So I didn't do it wrong. Then what would, what would your 6x be? Negative. Then what would your 5 be? Negative. Well, it's the same thing. Okay. Tell her, just tell her. Okay. All right. Now, factor factors of 5 that add to 6. Yeah. I can factor that. Or I can do quadratic formula. I'm going to factor that because this, these things take a while. So if I get a shortcut on factoring it, that would be x plus 5 times x plus 1 equals 0. So when you solve both of those, gets you a negative 5 and a negative 1. A lot of people circle that and stop there. That's not your final answer. That is negative 5 something because that's an x. This is an x, negative 1, something. So I have to plug that negative 5 and negative 1 back in to find the y's to complete that ordered pair. So I just got to look up somewhere there where it's going to be easy to find y's. I would probably plug it in here in this first thing. So let me write that down here. y equals negative 2x squared minus 6. y equals negative 2x squared minus 6. So I've had uh, negative 2 times negative 5 squared minus 6. Negative 5 squared is 25. Times negative 2 is negative 50. Negative 50 minus 6 is negative 56. So there's one point where they're going to intersect. Imagine if we had to do that graphing. You had to count left 5 and down 56. I'd never find it. I don't know about y'all. Now I plug the negative 1 in to get the other one. Negative 2 times negative 1 squared minus 6. Negative 1 squared is 1. Times negative 2 is negative 2. Minus 6 is negative 8. So those are your final two answers. I'm going to write my answer different than she did, though. But it's not wrong. All right, number 15. I got 8x plus y equals negative 2x squared minus 8. And then I got x squared minus y minus 6x equals negative 10. All right, remember in the ways that we can solve these are by substitution or elimination. Neither, it's not ready for substitution and it's not ready for elimination either one. It's not substitution because it's not solved for one variable. It's not elimination because everything's all jumbled up. So what I chose to do is I chose to move stuff around and get it in a good order so that I can get rid of the y's and have a quadratic. So I'm going to add 2x squared on that first one to move that over. And then I've got a positive 8x and a positive y, and then I'm going to add that 8 and move it over. Now you could leave the 8 on the outside as well, but I chose to move it over. Alright, so now I need to get that second one in the same order, so it's kind of close. i got an x squared. I want my x to come next. I don't have to add it because it's on the same side, so I can just swap them around, right? Do no slippery. And then add that 10. One time you got to do opposite, add or subtract, is when you go across the equal sign. All right, now look at your y's. They both got a 1 and they're different signs. So I can add this thing to get rid of them. So I get me 3x squared. 8x and negative 6x is 2x. Y and negative y is nothing. 
18. All right, so from that, if I check for factoring, it would have to be by grouping, and it's not going to anyway, but I don't like to do grouping. So I am looking at the quadratic formula on this. My A would be 3, my B would be 2, and my C would be 18. So I've got X equals negative B plus or minus the square root of B squared minus 4AC all over 2A. Uh, I don't remember what I got underneath there. I erased it. Anybody got what? 4 minus 4 times 3 times 18 is? 216. Alright, I stopped when I got there. Okay, you could, it's okay. You could break 216 down, but what I noticed is that since it's got a negative underneath there, it's going to have imaginary answers. Wait, that'd be negative 212 because I didn't oh. subtract 400. My bad, hold on. Still going to be negative underneath there. Negative 212. Okay, so anyway, you could break the 212 or whatever you got underneath there down. But the, we're, we're told to solve the system, so we're looking for where they're going to intersect. They're going to intersect in the imaginary world. They got an eye underneath there. So I can't see that point where they're going to intersect, can I? So I gave it a big no solution. If you kept going and put the imaginary stuff on there, that's okay. You, I'm not I counting. Don't know. So, so the, and that's why I was saying why I quit earlier. She, Mr. Stewart kept going and solved it all so the way out. But you can't see those imaginary solutions, so they don't do them any good. So if you have a negative underneath the radical, you just put those On when you're solving a system, yes. yeah, not when you're just solving a quadratic. And 17 were the artworks. I enjoyed those, I know. 16 is the simpler one because it just has one. Y well, is greater than or equal to negative x squared minus 4. That's an easy one to graph because your b is 0. So negative 0 divided by 2 times negative 1, that's 0. And then if you plug a 0 back in, it's negative 4. Let's count on every line. One, two, three, four. So it's vertex to be at zero, negative four. All right. Now I got. I can't plug. Can't use zero because it's already used. So I'm gonna plug a one in, just because Kylie said to. So it gets me negative one squared minus four. One squared is one. Negative. Make it a negative. Minus four is negative five. So I'll go over one and down five. So that's one away, so it's got to be one away on the other side. Does that probably get drawn with a solid or a dash curve? Solid is correct. Well, where's your vertex? That big point right there in the middle. Exactly. Zero, negative four. Alright, now I just got to figure out where to shade on this. Does it get shaded just in the parabola or does it get shaded around the outside? So I pick a point in the parabola. That's 0, negative 4, so I'm going to pick, check 0, negative 5. I'm going to plug that in. So uh, negative 5, that's my y, greater than or equal to 0 squared minus 4. Is negative 5 greater than or equal to negative 4? No. No. So that point cannot be shaded, which means I shade around the outside. I think the point... Um, Zero, negative six, instead of negative five, and I thought that it was two. But that's the wrong. You might have put them in. Did you put them in the wrong spot? No, I was thinking. Oh. I mean, negative six is bigger than negative yeah. four. Yeah, got messed up on yeah. it. All right, everybody good on that? Seventeen. That's the even uglier because it's got two of them. We've got to find where they overlap. 
standard form ready to go or anything. Uh, the first one is pretty close, the red one that I wrote. Um, you can subtract that x squared. Y is less than or equal to negative x squared plus 2. Now that's ready to graph. If I do b over 2a, my b is 0. So I'm going to be, my axis of symmetry is going to be at 0. If I plug a 0 back in, 0 squared plus 2 is 2. So my vertex would be 0, 2. Okay, uh, Kylie probably want to use 1 again, so I'm going to do negative 1 squared plus 2. 1 squared is 1, make it negative, add that to 2, and I get 1. That is 1 away from the axis of symmetry, so I go 1 away on the other side. So which one of those is the right there? Yep. And then I got 1 and got 1 more? Yep. And 2, negative 2 would be another point. Mm -hmm. All right, does that probably get drawn with the solid or dashed line? Solid, solid line. Curves, what I should say. On the test, we have one like this. Can we use color pencils again? Yeah. That's good. Though. I don't know why I missed that. All right, now I need to pick a test point. I'm going to pick O, 0, 0. 0 is less than or equal to 0 plus 2. Mm -hmm. All because of that equal to bar, right? Because, mm -hmm. no, that's not why. Yeah. Just zero is less than two. That was, I don't know what I was trying to say. Yeah, I plugged in so, a different point. It was two is greater than equal to two. So. And then you yeah. would be counting on equal sign. That's right. I'm going to do that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's what I was trying to say. Yeah. 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 You just told me to wait and I know, to go. but then I don't want to wait. Make your mind easy. Why don't you? Yeah. 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 All right, my test point made it true, so I'm shading in there. All right, on the blue one. Uh, let's see the way I did it on my paper. No, okay. I'm just gonna. I could move the Y over. That'd be less stuff to move over, but I don't. That's gonna. I don't like that. I like when I'm doing with inequalities. I like the y to be on the left side, so I'm going to just move all this junk over. So I'm going to add 2x squared. That's in 1x squared. I'm going to add x squared. I'm going to add 2x. I'm going to subtract 6. Okay, I actually have, it's not going to be 0 for me this time because I've got a b. So x is negative b over 2a. My a is 1. So my x is negative 1. So that's going to be right in there. I plug negative 1 back in. Negative 1 squared plus 2 times negative 1 minus 6. 1 minus 2 is negative 1. Minus 6 is negative 7. That's not going to show up on my graph. I'm just going to have to guesstimate. Let's say it'll be about right there. Should have counted on every line. I wasn't looking ahead very well. I apologize. All right, we'll plug zero in now. Zero, zero, negative six. So over zero, down six. That is one away. So I go one away on the other side. Is that the uh, solar dash? A whopper job, probably if I've ever seen one. All right, zero zero is inside that though, isn't it? So I'm going to test zero zero again. Gives me zero is greater than negative six. Yes, it is. So I'll shade inside it. My answer is the stuff where blue and red are both shaded. So your other points are. Zero, negative six, and 
negative. No. Zero, negative six, and negative two. Negative. So that blob of beauty is the answer. This is confusing because I kind of got two on our yeah, yeah, I said if you want to buy it, if it's one, you have to go in. Make sure you can do the other thing. Good. Here they are. Alright. We've got three old word of problems. I know. I ate that one. The toy rocket is fired straight into the air. It has an initial velocity of 48 feet per second, and it's modeled by that equation, where h is the height in feet and t is the time in seconds. At what time will it reach its maximum height? So that you're looking for the vertex to reach its maximum height. That's going to be right before it starts falling and coming back down. So you're looking for the vertex there. So if that is uh, the equation, 480t minus 16t squared, you got to realize what is your B because they jumbled this up. 480. So X is negative B over 2. What's your A? Negative 16. They jumbled it up on you there. but So that's negative. My name is positive. So 480 divided by 32 got me 15. Is that what you got? So after 15 seconds, the thing will be at its height. Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah, yeah. Ready for 19? I had to remember some geometry stuff for 19. I kind of liked it a little bit. Since right triangle, so I don't really want an isosceles, so that's a equilateral. I'll better have an isosceles. Let me see if I've got an isosceles. Beat. Go look again for an isosceles. Yeah. There we go. All right, says on number 19, a carpenter is cutting a board to make a brace on a wall that will be used in a house. The shape of the brace is a right triangle. In order for the brace to fit, the legs of the brace must have a ratio of 3 to 2. The hypotenuse has to be 26 inches long, so i got to have a 26 there. Now, what are these legs going to be? I don't know, but I know they got to have a ratio of 2 to 3 or 3 to 2, however you want to write that. Okay. So it wouldn't matter if you did 3x. No, doesn't matter. So now it's Pythagorean theorem here to solve for this. Because Pythagorean theorem is a squared plus b squared equals c squared. So I've got 2x squared plus 3x squared equals 26 squared. Notice I put that in parentheses, and I did that to remind you you don't just square the x. you got to square the 2 and the x. So that's 4x squared. Same thing here. That's 9x squared. And then 26 squared was 676. 4 and 9, those are like terms, so that's 13x squared. Now, you've got options on how to solve that. You could subtract the 676, make the BB0, and do quadratic formula, or you could just solve it algebraically. I just solved it, worked out pretty good. Divide by 13. That got me 52. So then I had to undo that by square rooting 52, and I don't care about the negative on this one. We're finding lengths of a board, so we're not going to be negatives. 52's biggest perfect square is 4. So that's 2 square roots of 13, and I didn't really even need to write that. Because look there, it says round your answer to the nearest tenth. So this carpenter wants to actually know some stuff. So two, a square root of 52, or 2 square roots of 13, would be about... 7.2. Now that's not your answer. The question says, what are the what will the lengths of the legs be? This 7.2 is x. This leg is 3 times that. This leg is 2 times that. So when I did that, 2 times 7.2, that got me 14.4. 3 times 7.2, that got me 21.6.
Tell us a fun one for lockdown. Last one. You and a friend decide to go into business selling bobbleheads. That's interesting. The profit P for selling B bobbleheads is given by that equation. How many bobbleheads will you have to sell for your profit to be greater than 100? Yeah, I actually. You can. I'm just going to solve it like normal to start with. Let me get negative 2b squared plus 15b minus 150. And then I'm just going to see how many i got to sell to get 100 to start with, and then we'll go from there. So to make this into a quadratic, I subtracted that 100 from both sides. So I have negative 0.2b squared plus 15b minus 250. I've thought about this later. It probably, if I had I probably could have done this easier if I divided everything by negative 0.2 to get rid of that. But I, when I worked it, I didn't. I just used that stuff in the quadratic formula. So I'll go ahead and do that because that's probably what y'all would do. My A would be negative 0.2. My B would be 15. My C would be negative 250. So that got me X equals negative B plus or minus square root. B squared, 15 squared is 225 minus 4 times negative 0.2 times negative 250 all over 2 times a so 2 times negative 0.2 is negative 0.4 all right believe it or not all that stuff worked out underneath there to be 25. did y'all get that anybody get that far got a 25 underneath there mm -hmm. square root of 25 is 5. So I got square root of 25 is 5, so I got to do negative 15 plus 5 and divide it by negative 0.4. So I got to do negative 15 minus 5 and divide it by negative 0.4. I got me 25 and 20. All right, so let's look at this in context of what we were trying to find out here. How many bobblehead dolls will you have to sell for your profit to be greater than 200, or greater than 100, excuse me. So I'm looking at this on a graph here, 20 and 25. Yeah, that is 50. I wrote that down. That, Kylie said that correct. The number that would get me greater than 100 would be that in between there. So. To write that all fancy like, 25 has to be, x has to be between 25 and 50. Mm -hmm. Now, why would you use the Well, if you read from the x, x is bigger than 25 and x is smaller than 50, so oh. you're between them. Okay, everybody good? So if you wrote it like 50 first and 25 seconds, you do the signs the other way? Yeah, but don't do that. Always put the smaller number on the left. So it's like off the number line. All right, have that. So you got with you tomorrow if you want to use it. Have any notes with you tomorrow if you want to use it. You do negative 15 plus 5, that got you negative 10. And then negative 10 divided by negative 0.4. That would be 25. Same thing on the other side. Divide by negative 0.4.